humans depend primarily on vision for orientation in the world that surrounds them. While image formation is a phenomenon that takes place in the eye, the interpretation of the image as a representation of the real world occurs in the brain. Direct visual signals arrive into the primary cortex called the V1 region, which is located in the occipital region of the brain. The secondary visual cortex, which comprises V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, V7 and V8 regions, depends on the V1 region. The visual signals are transmitted along the fibers of the optic nerves. The fibers meet and cross at the optic chiasm. The brain does not receive signals from each eye unilaterally. Within one optic nerve, a defined group of accents crosses over to join the opposite optic nerve. Half of each optical field is directed to the ipsilateral portion of the brain. The other half is directed to the contralateral portion. Thus, each side of the brain receives visual information from both eyes. Information from the temporal part of the right visual field crosses over to the left hemisphere. Information from the temporal part of the left visual field crosses over to the right hemisphere. This is called contralaterality of vision. Let's go back to the beginning once more and observe how the eye detects the electromagnetic radiation reflected from objects. Light passes through the cornea, pupil and lens on its way to the retina, where the visual scene is focused. projects an inverted image onto the retina, the same way a camera lens projects an inverted image onto a film. The retina is a highly specialized neuronal tissue. Most of the cells of the retina are neurons. Among others, we have the rods and cones, also called photoreceptors. The fovea, the central region of the retina only has cones. These require high levels of light to generate signals, thus they work best in daytime conditions. Cones are responsible for color vision and high visual resolution. Color vision relies on the wavelength specificity of cones, which respond to narrow bands of color, and also depends on cortical structures, which sort the proportional response of the different types of cones. In the peripheral regions of the retina, Rods greatly outnumber cones. Rods are better contrast sensors and have a major role in peripheral vision. They are adapted to dim light and cannot work in bright light. Photopigments, referred to as opsins, are embedded in stacks of cell membranes in the outer segment of photoreceptors. These photopigments are able to absorb the energy of the visible spectrum. Rhodopsin, the light-absorbing pigment incorporated in the outer segment discs of the rods, contains a prosthetic group called cis-retinol. The retinal isomer rises to a null trans conformation upon absorption of light and dissociates itself from the opsin. Rhodopsin binds to and activates the G-protein transducin. The activated alpha subunit of transducin binds to the cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. Phosphodiesterase activation triggers the hydrolysis of cyclic GMP and as a result causing the rapid decline in cytoplasmic cyclic GMP levels in the outer segment of the rod. The drop in cyclic GMP levels leads to the cation channels closure in the plasma membrane and blockage of sodium and calcium in flux. Consequently, the photoreceptor membrane hyperpolarizes, generating a direct flow of electric current along the membrane.
In the dark, the depolarized rod releases glutamate. The neurotransmitter release is halted when the hyperpolarization reaches the synaptic terminal. The retinal cells are grouped in two main circuits. The vertical circuit consists of photoreceptors, bipolar cells and ganglion cells. The modulation circuit consists of horizontal and amacrine cells. The synaptic terminal of the rod makes contact with bipolar cells. The synapses may be modulated by horizontal cells. The reduced glutamate release activates the bipolar cells that are hyperpolarized in the dark and respond to light increments. These are called on circuits. On the other hand, it also inhibits the bipolar cells that are depolarized in the dark and respond to light decreases. These are called off circuits. With suitable inhibitory or excitatory signals, the information is passed from bipolar to ganglion cells. The synapses may be modulated by the amacrine cells. Ganglion cells, unlike the other retinal neurons, do have action potentials. It is the changes in light intensity and the shifting of the image over the field of vision that causes a change in the firing rate in ganglion cells. The axons of the ganglion cells, which are the last neurons in the chain, bundle to form the optic nerves. That marks the beginning of transmission to the visual processing centers of the central nervous system. A key intermediate base station is the dorsal lateral geniculate nucleus, one of the thalamus neuronal nuclei. This region of the brain is the site of synapses between the axons of the ganglion cells and a set of cortical thalamic neurons whose projections radiate and carry the signal into the visual cortex. Activated monocular neurons in the viewer region send output to binocular neurons which begin the rendering of images. This mechanism is responsible for the stereoscopic vision. The images formed by the two eyes and transmitted to the brain's visual cortex are not quite identical. This discrepancy compels the brain to compare the two images and to render a single integrated image. Because the information is interpreted in the visual cortex, we may well say that this is where the true vision resides. <laughs>